Hello YouTube, welcome to this installment of the Evian blog. So today we're going a little bit back to our normal sort of uh, movie categories. We're going to be reviewing a meter, a multi-purpose multimeter for want of a better word, um, from Fluke. And um, yeah, we're just going to take a look around the meter, see what it offers, what it's all about. Is it versatile enough uh, to warrant as a single carry device for electricians or even electronics technicians? The meter itself is aimed more at the electrical guy. So let's get down to the bench and have a look and see what it's all about. Hey guys, so this Fluke, 80, uh, sorry, Fluke 1587 1587 comes with the following pros before we jump down to the review. This is the Fluke i400 current clamp. Um, I don't think all, all of them come with the same set, uh, just the set that I got comes with it. This allows you to measure uh, amps up to 400 amps, uh, which would basically read 400. 400 amps would read 400 milliamps on your multimeter. Uh, one amp would read one milliamp. So this can read one to 400 amps. Uh, it also comes with this probe over here, which is for the insulation resistance test. You'll see it's got a slightly different plug on it. Plugs into the meter and then instead of reaching over to the meter to push test, you can push test here and perform your insulation resistance test. Then the actual leads themselves. <coughs> These are the Fluke. Let's see if they've got a model number on because I've never seen them. The TP74. Now they've got the standard sort of fluke ends, uh, nice quality with nice stress relief, etc. Nice silicone leads, very nice silicone leads actually. And of course these probes. Now these probes are similar to other fluke probes and so that they open up and you've got your banana sort of plug there. But the thing about these is you can actually unplug your cable from them, taking the probe off and then attaching a crocodile clip or whatever you want. That makes them quite um, good for sort of general purpose testing um, and all sorts of other things. Uh, I, ri I really like the leads that came with this meter so yeah they are very good very nice quality but we're going to put them aside for now and we're going to do some testing now between the Fluke 1587 accuracies DC etc. I'm not going to worry about AC have a closer look at the backlights um, maybe measure some diodes and capacitors a couple of resistors and just see how the meter stacks up overall. Okay, so yeah, on the bench we have the case that this meter comes in. We're going to open up and that's what we have inside. Books, etc. stored on the top over here. You can't really see it, but if we slide this down, you'll see there. And here you have your meter and all your test leads, etc. So let's get a little bit closer to the meter itself and uh, see what's on offer. Right, take that out. Let's move this out of the way. And take a look at this rather nice meter, for want of a better word. All right, let's just try and get a bit of a better angle on it. Excuse the junk lying around on the workbench over here. All right, there we have it. So this is the Fluke 1587 insulation multimeter. What that basically means is it is a basic functioning multimeter that can also support um, doing insulation resistance tests using obviously voltage, uh, 500 says from 50 to 1000 volts insulation test. So the meter's quite normal for sort of um, Fluke's build. It's a decent build quality. Um, it's not bad actually. Uh, it feels like the usual sort of decent quality plastics, uh, decent quality screen, uh, decent quality switch, etc. So nothing completely whack about it or out of the ordinary. And um, I think all intents and purposes, it's kind of like having a Fluke 177 or 179 with a whole bunch of extra functionality. So the basic function sets of this meter. Volts AC, volts DC, temperature, millivolts, DC, um, resistance, capacitance, diode test, continuity, milliamps. Now you'll notice it says milliamps because the milliamps are also used for measuring amps using the included uh, current lamp. So this meter does work as a current lamp meter as well, which is quite nice. So 
to take a look at basic functionality of this meter we'll turn it on and there you'll have the display you can see it's auto ranging with the usual sort of range there's no analog bar graph on this this meter is aimed more at your electrician than your electronics technician um, it's got a fairly decent resolution for a basic meter uh, all your function sets are there you've got your resistance um, then of course you've got capacitance um, then you've got your continuity you've got your diet test you've got your milliamps AC and DC and then of course you've got your insulation resistance tester now your range would be selected 550, 100, 5, 2, sorry let's go from the beginning go 50 volts, 100 volts 250 volts, 500 volts, and 1000 volts. And then you would literally just hold that in to do the test. And it would give you your output voltage there, the bottom, uh, in the smaller writing, and then your resistance, which would now hold, so you can see. Um, all intents and purposes, it's, it's no different from any other insulation resistance tester. The only difference being that this one is all integrated into one nice, comfortable device. So for those electricians looking for something that's all sort of together, very nice piece of hardware to have, I think. We're going to test the output on the insulation resistance test against uh, what it should be and uh, see that the DC output is as the device specifies. So that's something we will do with this meter. Um, we're also going to take a look around at the accuracy of the DC, not so much the AC, but more the DC side of things. And uh, yeah, we'll check some resistors, how low that she can go basically, can she do low resistance like uh, some of the other meters that I use or not. I don't expect it to go as far as many of the high-end electronics meters, but let's see. Right, so here we go with the close-up looks of the meter. So here we have the Fluke 1587 alongside uh, one of my well-calibrated meters, the Bryman TBM 867. This is a 500,000 count meter, so it's for all intents and purposes a pretty good piece of hardware. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to try and simultaneous clip both meters in so that they're both measuring simultaneously so we can compare directly between the two devices and see how they stack up so in order to do that we do have to connect both of them up um, which I'm busy doing at the moment and then we'll start doing the actual tests it's always interesting to see how these meters stack up uh, both of them being very 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 decent multimeters with a lot of capability so I wouldn't complain about using either of these on my test bench personally some people are fluke only others like the Bryman me personally I don't care they're both very good brand meters and both of them will get the job done very very well so I'm going to start off with some DC measurements uh, let's get my DC reference hooked up over here and let's start off right at the bottom all right so they're both in auto range now this one will read a little, quite a lot lower actually but so far you can see they're both on par and even if you went to 500,000 count I think it's unnecessary to compare to that level so we'll just keep it at 50,000 and see how it goes all right so we're gonna roll it up to just over a volt so we got 1.009 on the reference you'll see 1.0099 okay now my reference doesn't go that accurate so this meter is now reading very accurately this one is now there you go they're actually spot on um, there might be a slight and I'm talking uh, less than 0.1 of a millivolt difference but they're both on par there um, so yeah, let's scroll it up a little bit more. Let's go to around 5 volts. See how close I can get this to 5. That's pretty close, but I want to get it closer. Ah, well, anyway, that'll do. So you can see we've got 
spot on. Let's go up to around 12. And as can be expected from Fluke, I think this thing's going to be pretty accurate all the way through the scale. Um, I don't have any calibration on this Fluke, but um, being relatively new, I don't think it will be that far out. The Bryman was calibrated a couple of months back, so we know that one's within spec. So there you got it, 12 volts. That's uh, pretty spot on still. Uh, I'm not sure if it will, but let's go to around 20, 24. Uh, let's take it to 20, because at least we know the reference is stable at 20. Scrolling it back. Sorry, this pot is a noise too great. So we got 20.004005 on the reference. This one won't go low, but as you can see, still spot on. So yeah, I'd be quite happy with the DC measurement side of things there, to be honest. Um, yeah, it is varying slightly, but still well within range. I think if I tapped it down to just below It'll go, there you go, perfectly, perfectly perfect. So yeah, I'd say that's pretty damn accurate on the DC side of things. Uh, what more would you actually want? So off to the next step, we're gonna kill this DC over here and we're gonna check out a couple of diodes, uh, a couple of resistors and uh, well, just do some testing around that, that way. Okay, just a quick uh, catch up over here. This is my 10.3 ohm resistor that I use as a reference for a lot of things. It's not a true reference, but we'll see how close to 10.3, which we know this is close to on the calibrated meter we can get. Now bear in mind, leads do play a difference in things. So you can see it's getting pretty close. There you go, 10.3 ohms. So I'd say much too much. Um, the resistance is gonna be quite okay. And what I like about this meter is you'll also notice it'll go down to 0 0.1 of an ohm. Uh, most of uh, electrical sort of test meters will only go down to 1 ohm. So that does make a bit of a difference to the life of things over here. Um, now, just a quick one. We'll have a look at a quick diode. we just find one. we got one here. The diode test functionality will be pretty much on par with most. Oh, while we're at it, let's quickly do the continuity. definitely a latching so there's no crackling whatsoever and it responds every time very quickly perfect so we'll go over now to the diode test and we'll do a reverse nothing and now I'm hoping that this fluke will have the, sig the, the fluke signature peep when it does this test and yes it does 0 0.588 Beep. That's one thing I've always enjoyed about Fluke. It gives you an indication um, that the junction is working without actually going and digging too much into it. Of course, we could do a few tests on capacitors and stuff by just throwing it onto the capacitance mode. Uh, here we've got a 10 microfarad. I'm not going to do too much of this because we could sit here testing the old day. I can guarantee you this meter is going to be well within spec there we got 9.15 microfarads 9.16 no problems at all and it's very fast at measuring these capacitors which is nice um, i'd be keen to see quickly how it would do with a large value capacitor which normally would take some time to read so let's see if i've got one here what is this it's a hundred I don't really have any too high at the moment. I did find a 2200 in the stock tray. So let's try 2200 and see how it go, goes. Also pretty fast if you ask me. 2175. Perfect. Very nice. Well done, Fluke. Um, so yeah, for general purposes, a very nice all-round multimeter. Um, it does miss a few functions such as microamps and stuff like that for electronics, but for electrical work, this thing will do what you need it to do and a whole lot more. 
Um, it's the typical Fluke construction, like the Fluke 289s, etc. Uh, it's just an all-around fantastic meter, but be warned, for current measurements, this meter will only measure up to 440 milliamps on the current scale. So you have to use a clamp meter if you want to go higher than 440 milliamps. There's no way about it. The one downfall is between 440 milliamps and one amp on the clamp. You're not really going to read any resolution there. Um, oh, maybe, possibly. I actually don't know. It might. Um, one last quick test just before we close down. Let's throw some AC onto this thing and see how it reads the AC. All right, there we've got 230 volts. I don't know why it's reading lower than it should, unless the Variac is doing something weird and wonderful. Anything is possible in this place because people sometimes play around. By people, I mean me, so I'm not going to stress too much about that. Also, these are probably not the best probes to try and get into small little banana jack sockets, but um, there's a way around this. If you just give me two seconds. Just make sure these two don't touch, otherwise there's going to be some sparks in here. And power that down. Get hooked up. And there you have it, 234.6 volts. And of course, there's a low impedance mode over here. Um, I don't see any frequency functionality on this meter to do your frequency, your 50 hertz. But otherwise, oh wait, there's a hertz here. Let's just see what it does. Oh, it doesn't show it here, but of course, a button over here with hertz. If you hit that, you've got your 50.1 hertz ac um so yeah very nice a very nice all-round electrical meter so in closing on this review the 1587 fantastic all-round meter if you just want to carry one device for insulation resistance tests and as a multimeter it does fall short on a few functions but it does and you know what for me i think it's it's versatile enough to keep one in your bag or in your toolbox. Um, personally, alongside something like my 117, still one of my staple meters, or even you get the 115s, one of the workhorse industries, these guys are killer meters as well. They'll definitely keep you going for many years. Still my staple favorite on the bench, of course, the Bryman TBM867, Toptronic in South Africa. And of course, I also keep a couple of unities. Uh, this is the uh, 40,000 count unity. Uh, I quite like it for electronics measurements. I wouldn't use it for anything high current or high voltage potential because uh, it does have a potential for safety issues, etc. We'll still do some further reviewing on those devices in upcoming episodes. But I just thought, well, I haven't done a review of a multimeter for some time, so I thought it's a good place to do the review of the Fluke 1587 insulation multimeter. Um, a fantastic piece of hardware all around. Like I say, if you're an electrician, don't forget these little 117s, 115s. These things are beast meters. This specific 117 has got a lot of function sets, which I would miss if I was just carrying the installation multimeter. Uh, but the two combined, you can do pretty much anything. And of course, that clamp can also be used on the 117s and 115s. Um, the little 115s, Pretty much a similar sort of function sets to the 117s, uh, minus a few things here and there, but otherwise all the same. And then of course the 867. Thanks for watching everybody and until next time, take care.